Has this entrepreneurial spirit always been in you? No. <laughs> you know what made me be an entrepreneur when I started making money and I was like, I don't want to make money. And then it's just gone. Because when I was younger, anytime I had a little stack of money, it was just gone like that. And I never really educated myself on finances until I bought this house. This was my first house. And I know before we started the interview, we were talking about how I said I wanted to pay this off. And I did pay it off last year for my Congratulations. In January. Thank you. I made that last payment. It took me like six years to pay this off. And I did it. And now I just bought another house. So I'm in the process of redoing that house. But what I've learned is that it's not about stacking your money and keeping it in the bank. It's about having money and then making your money work. And so if I feel like I have a bunch of money in the bank that's doing nothing, that's useless to me. And so, you know, I've been really blessed to open businesses that have been doing well. I haven't seen like a huge turnaround, but I'm patient. You know, this hair store just opened the juice bar in Brooklyn. We've definitely made back all the money that we've invested in it. It's been great for the community. And I have a press juice business that we actually had to restructure, but that's coming back out next month, thankfully. I just was looking at today at um, what the new bottles look like, but it's going to be amazing. Drink fresh juice. And I have a coffee shop that I'm opening. So today I went to go look at the coffee shop to do the lease for that. So I'm excited. And I have a coffee company called Coffee Uplifts People. It's like right behind me in the background, but I know you can't see it that well. But I started that during this pandemic. And so my whole thing is I do enjoy starting businesses. I do like having brick and mortar locations, but what people have to also do when you have those is have a great online presence and have marketing behind it also to uh, just kind of uh, supplement what your sales are going to be in person because a lot of people can't come to Brooklyn or come to Detroit and go to your yep. business. So you have to make sure they can order things online, which is something I feel like so many people learned during this pandemic. You have to have like a great online presence. And so those are just some things I'm doing. And I'm starting an investment group for women. And that's actually going to be announced next week. And I'm super excited about that. I already had some of my girls on board, but the whole point is to be able to expand it so anyone can join our investment group and learn how to invest in stocks because I've been investing in stocks, but not to the level that I should be. And so I did team up with this app called Public, and now they're really supporting me as far as starting this and providing some financial experts to talk to us and give us some tips so that we can be really well educated on it. You know, that's what I was going to ask you. So you have, because most people would stay away from brick and mortar at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you said you have to have an online presence along with the brick and mortar. So it makes sense. That's a great jewel for anybody who's listening. You, you don't put too much into the market yet. Well, I have, I do. I mean, it depends on what's too much. Like I've invested in things. I have a stockbroker that always keeps me up and my portfolio's decent, but I could be doing a lot more. And so I want to be able to have not just my stockbroker, but also have this app that shows me what how I can invest in things. And also it's easier for people, like maybe you only want to invest $50. Sometimes it's just getting your feet wet and getting started to feel more confident to be able to do more. And so now I feel a little bit more confident to be able to do more. And so I want to have multiple investments and in multiple ways I invest my stockbroker on the app, then have these financial investors who I can talk to that can really advise me on things that I should be doing. And I want to be able to pay that information forward because like I told you before, that's what it's all about. If I learn something and I think it's great, I want other people to learn it too. And so that's just how I feel. I'm not like, okay, I know about this. I don't want anybody else to know. I'm more like, okay, I learned this and it worked for me. I'm not good at, at telling people to do things that didn't work for me. I know people will be like, oh, you just need to do this. It's so easy. There's certain things that I'm like, I'll stay away from that because it doesn't work out. I don't want to be responsible for somebody saying, oh, Angela told me to do this. I would rather do things myself. This worked out well. I can recommend it. If you choose to do it or not, that's on you. Educate yourself on it. But if it worked for me, it could potentially work for you. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.